Good morning, everyone. I'm Larry Woodruff. I'm the pastor here among all of us who gather via live stream or in person here in the congregation. I want to welcome you this morning. There are some things that you can find in your bulletin if you are at home and you pull that up there on the screen here as well. I want to call your attention to a few of those as we gather this morning. Uh, Young at Heart, led by um, 930 every Sunday morning if you need the, the code to get to that. Uh, we can get you that. Uh, it's, uh, I think it's, our, it's usually shared every, every Saturday via our uh, face, uh, internet, no, email blast. So I'll remind you of that. Men's Bible study continue to meet every Tuesday morning right out under the cover at 8 o'clock. If you'd like to be a part of that, we invite you to bring a chair and come and share in that. Uh, Facebook prayer time every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 10 o'clock. Uh, via our Facebook page, so I invite you to that. And then children, uh, there's uh, a children's event via Zoom every Wednesday night at 6, and there's some other children's things coming as well. So be a part of that. And let's just scroll on down uh, from the uh, prayer time. Keep going, keep going, keep going. One more. Are we in line? Yeah. Stop right there. there you'll see the boxes in the back. We're collecting uh, school supplies for Ellendale Elementary, so please be aware of that. Keep going. One more. Uh, we're going to do a blessing of backpacks and devices uh, together and digitally. That's still being worked on, but that's next week. And one more. And um, there's more kids' times, kid, kids times coming. Wow. And so please, that was also in your bulletin, those things, if you are looking, participating with us at home this morning. So be aware of those. Anything else to share this morning? Yes, ma'am. Good. It's tough getting through all this stuff. Any other announcements? Anything else to share this morning? It's wonderful to have you here this morning worshiping with us. I want to thank you for that. Mike, I believe you have a song. Get that organ ready to go. Let's join together in worship. Would you join me? Wow, thank you, Mike. Let's go to God in prayer. God, we just welcome you and we praise you. You're the God of power, the God of might, the God who created all things around us. This morning, Lord, as we come into your presence, as you fill this place with your power and spirit, may our worship and praise be acceptable. Heal the brokenness as we bring. Renew our faith. Draw us close to you. Have your way with us in these moments together. God, it's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Matthew, let's sing something. Oh, good morning, everybody. Glad to see each of you here and those of you at home. Our first song this morning is number 156, if you have a hymnal at home, but the words will be up on the screen. I love to tell the story, and we'll sing the first, second, 
and fourth verses this morning. So I invite you to stand and join me for our opening song today. I love to tell the story of unseen things above, of Jesus and his glory, of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story because I know it is true. It satisfies my longing as nothing else can do. I love to tell the story, it will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story, more wonderful it seems than all the golden fancies of all our golden dreams. I love to tell the story it did so much for me and that is just the reason i tell it now to thee i love to tell the story it will be my theme in glory to tell the old, old story of Jesus and his love. I love to tell the story for those who know it best, seem hungering and thirsting to hear it like the rest. And when in scenes of glory I sing the new, new song, it will be the old story that I have loved so long. I love to tell the story, it will be my theme in glow. Tell the old, old story of Jesus and oh. Thank you. If you remain standing, please. You'll find the next part of our service this morning is an Apostles' Creed. I remember, as I realized as I was putting things together uh, for worship this week, that we've pretty much taken creeds out of our order of worship since we began uh, dealing with the coronavirus and virtual worship and trying to shorten services just a little bit because we've live streamed them and other reasons. And Creeds have pretty much, our affirmations of faith have pretty much been non-existent, and we need to remember those. It's not just because we may be missaying it, but because we need to hear ourselves affirm our faith and to remind ourselves what we believe. And so the Apostles' Creed does a great job of that. It's up on the screen. If you're worshiping with us in the sanctuary, it's also in the bulletin. If you received a bulletin and you're live streaming with us this morning, so... If you need that to follow along one way or the other, you have it. Would you join me as we share this together, please? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. 
Amen. Yeah, now you be seated with me, please. You know, you've heard me say it a million times as often as we come together. Whenever we gather, it's always appropriate to share joys and concerns. And so let's do that now as we gather. <clears throat> Anita shared a joy with us. Are there any other joys? Any other joys you'd like for us to celebrate this morning? What about concerns? Are there prayer concerns that you would want us to hold up together? In a few more days, I believe, and they can be out. Yes, ma'am. Billy Noah. We need to remember. Yes, ma'am. Oh, wow. Okay. Neither. Okay, Ms. Stewart. Yes, ma'am. Mike, battling cancer. Uh, one, of our, one of our own, I didn't know it until I talked to uh, Barbara this morning. Mike Roper is in the hospital uh, dealing with a, a knee issue, so we need to remember Mike. Anyone else? Let's go to God in prayer. As uh, Mike, another Mike, plays uh, for us, take a moment to share your own prayers, your silent prayers with God. Mike, would you begin for us this morning? Just lift up your prayers. You've heard our request this morning. I know you bring. we all bring our own challenges and issues to uh, here this morning. <clears throat> thank you lord for this opportunity that we have to come together we worship you and we praise you the god who created us the god of all things the bible says that your hand the universe was created the heavens and the earth when we begin to look into the universe and begin to measure as best we can god the universe is for me unimaginable the you know, number of stars that are there is beyond my understanding yet lord you created them all and for that we give you thanks and praise you're truly worthy worthy of our praise and then lord when we this little bitty speck of dust sort of in the midst of all of the vastness of universe when we begin to move away from you god you came for us and you offered on our behalf the very best you could give in jesus christ what a great display of your mighty love God, you continue to love us, and we are so blessed. We give you thanks. Today, Lord God, as we gather in your presence, in the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, as you fill this place in your presence, fill our hearts and lives as well. We offer you the brokenness as we bring. We bring before you the struggles, the, uh, the weight that we have even drug into this place. Give us the wisdom and the courage to lay these things before you and leave them at your feet and trust in you, Lord, with our very lives, our futures, and all that we are. For you've shown us your love for us and you care for us. God, even, in, though, that we're, even though we're a blessed people covered in your love, we come in the need of prayer. Those weights that we drag in that we've mentioned, the struggle with the loss of someone close in our lives, broken relationships in which we may be a part, illnesses even beyond those of the COVID virus, the tensions and the strife of just living in, the, in this year, 2020, struggles because of the pandemic, the loss of jobs, finances, and other important issues or needs in our lives, even, Lord, just the anger, the hatred, the hostility that seems to be a part of our country now 
uh, creates in us fear and, and uh, worry and wonder. It's an election year. That's always a challenge. God, you know our worries and our needs, our issues, even before we begin to, to formulate prayers and ask. So we pray for your help, your power, your presence in our lives. We pray for church families, Lord God, especially the Ellendale family. We pray for the leaders of our church, the leaders of this body of Christ. Help them, Lord, to seek your direction, to seek your way. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, as we open ourselves to you, let them have the ability, the strength, to lead us in the directions of service and ministry that you'd have us go. God, we just thank you that you are with us and that you lead or offer to lead every move we make. Once again, we pray for our church families. We pray for the needs of the community around us, for our leaders both locally and nationally. God, we just pray for your presence, your help, the experience of your love. We come before you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, as we pray. And then we come together to pray the prayer Jesus began almost 2,000 years ago. It's, in your, it's on the screen. It's in a bulletin if you're wor worshiping with us at home. Let's share it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We say it now almost every Sunday that we've transitioned or thought more, thought beyond just uh, offering plates that we would pass as we worshiped in this place before March the 15th. But realizing that worshiping ourselves with tithes and offerings goes far beyond just that plate and the gifts we give to the church. I do believe that offering ourselves is, is a part of our giving and it's a part of our worship experience. And that I believe there are opportunities. God places opportunities in front of us uh, every day of our lives. And so I'm encouraging you, as Roger sings in just a moment, to, to think about it, to be in prayer for those times this week. God will give you the opportunity to worship through the offering of yourselves. It could be, it could be over the phone. It could be where you work. It could be in a store somewhere, in a parking lot. But God will place before us opportunities for offering. Would you be in prayer for those now as we share this together? Roger? is empty no more traffic in the street all the builders tools are silent no more harvest in the wheat busy housewives cease their labor in the courtroom no debate work on earth has been suspended as the king comes through the gate, happy faces line the hallway. Those whose lives have been redeemed, broken homes that he has mended. Those from prison he has freed, little children and the aged hand in hand. And all aglow who were crippled, broken, ruined, clad in garments white as snow. The King is coming, oh, the King is coming. I just heard the trumpet sounding, and now his face I 
I'll see. Oh, the king is coming. The king is coming. Praise God. He's coming for me. I can hear the chariot sin and wrong regal worlds are now unfolding heaven's grandstand all in play heaven's choir is all assembled starts to sing amazing grace oh the king is coming oh the king is coming Repairing the trumpet sounding, and now his face I see. Oh, the king is coming! Oh, the king is coming! Thank God, he's coming for me! Thank God, he's Coming for me. Thank you, Roger. Just a little bit of opportunity to create your own words in there. You did good. Thank you. Awesome. We've been talking, um, well, now this is the second Sunday, about the vow we took. If we've joined a United Methodist Church, Ellendale or other, uh, there are, uh, we said, we, when we said yes to God and Jesus, and Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, we said we, we took the vow uh, to faithfully participate. And I, and I said this morning, what I probably should have done is done is had six sermons in this series instead of just one instead of five and added what it means to faithfully participate and just focus on those words to commit ourselves to give our lives totally to God but I know that um, if you are, like I said if you are a member then you've uh, said yes somewhere along the way to this um, to this question as members of Ellendale United Methodist Church or whatever church, will you faithfully participate in, your, in, in her ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? That's what you've said yes to. And if we've joined the church, uh, then all of us have declared before our membership, we've declared or we've proclaimed, I will. I will. I will faithfully participate. Uh, again, if it was if you joined Allendale before 2008, you said you would faithfully participate in your prayers, presence, gifts, and service. If it was after, and some of you come after, we've added witness to that as well, the general conference. But what that says, I believe, is that we're going to make God and serving God and being active in the body of Christ a priority in our lives, that it's a part of who we are. Because if you think about Prayers, presence, gifts, that's the giving of all that we are, service and witness, that's, that sort of culminates in what a, a Christian, having said yes to God and Jesus Christ, ought to be doing. And we've said, yes, we're going to do that through the Ellendale United Methodist Body of Christ. So we're going to look at all of those. Today, uh, we're going to look at presence. But before we do that, we're going to share this passage, as you will see from, I keep forgetting, most of us don't see it in the bulletin before. Oh, I, my, my tradition is, as you see in the bulletin, but you don't. So as you see on the screen, or at home, wherever you are, if you're live streaming, Isaiah chapter 6, verses 1 through 8, Isaiah, for whatever reason, is in the temple. He has the vision there in the temple. And to me, that's a part of presence, uh, because I believe that one can't be in the presence of God. One can't be 
living out their vow of presence without growing closer and closer to God, without being drawn into God. And at the end of what we read, there's this, there's this openness to going and serving God in the way God would call Isaiah. And I believe that's a part of who we are. Our presence with God increases our faith, and it's a cycle of just growing closer, being present, growing closer to God, experiencing more of God in our lives. And so let's read Isaiah. What you'll see on the screen is from the New Living Translation. I invite you to follow that. Or if you have a favorite translation with you, please share that as well. Isaiah chapter 6. Let's hear the word of the Lord. It was in the year King Uzziah died that I saw the Lord. He was sitting on a lofty throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Attending him were mighty seraphim, each having six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. They were calling out to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of heaven's armies. The whole earth is filled with his glory. Their voices shook the temple to its foundations, and the entire building was filled with smoke. And then I said, Isaiah said, It's all over. I am doomed, for I am a sinful man. I have filthy lips, and I live among people with filthy lips. Yet I have seen the king, the Lord of heaven's armies. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal, that he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. He touched my lips with it and said, See, this coal has touched your lips. Now your guilt is removed, and your sins are forgiven. And then I heard the Lord asking, Whom should I send as a messenger to this people? Who will go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Would you pray with me, please? We offer you thanks and praise today, Lord, for your, for your great word, for your holy word that fills our lives, that changes who we are. And in your presence today, holy God, in the outpouring of your Holy Spirit, in the uplifting of these great holy words, we pray again that prayer that we would be in the midst of living words, life-changing, transforming, healing words, that your words, your healing, living words would flow forth among no others, that you would open our hearts and minds and prepare us to receive your living words. Again, words of life, words to heal, words to transform, words to call us afresh to you, words to... Overcome doubt and fears. Words that are exactly what you intend for each of us in these moments together. It's in Jesus' great name we pray. Amen. Faithfully participate is where we are in, the, in our present. And so this morning let me ask you, what does it mean to be present? What does it mean to be present? There's an old joke. Uh, Steve has probably used it or heard it or scratched it off. It's not worthy of sharing in one of his sermons, Steve Adkins and some others. Of us. It's been around as long as I know. I found it and drug it back out for this morning. It seems there were, oh, and Mike, I forgot about Mike. He's represented here too. We're glad you're here, Kimberly. Um, I mean, Kristen. Um, three pastors got together. Good-sized town, well, little town. Three of the high steeple churches in the town always gathered every week, one of the local coffee shops, and just chatted about what was going on, the service past Sunday, what was happening in their church, what was happening in the community. And as they gathered, as things would go for this Sunday, I mean this, this week, uh, they began to talk about the bats in their bell towers. Is that the same as bats in a belfry? I don't know, but anyway, is it? Um, and they all said they couldn't, or, or, or several were saying, can't get rid of them. Cannot, they're driving us nuts. One of them said, you know, we have blocked up every opening, every crack in our bell tower, and for some reason they still get in. They're still getting in. 
Second one said, they're just a problem. He said, we didn't do that, but we got this device. They built this device, and we put it in the bell tower, and we trapped every bat that was, we trapped every bat. We trapped them all, and he said, we didn't want to kill them, so I drove them over 50 miles away from here. And they beat me, and let them go, and they beat me back to church. They were back in the bell tower before I got back home. I don't know what we're going to do. Third pastor was just there smiling all the time, smiling, taking it all in. He said, yeah, 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 I understand. He said, we did have a problem, but we don't anymore. They said, what did you do? How in the world did you get rid of them? He said, well, we, we came up with this idea. He said, we just took them into the church. We baptized them and confirmed them, and we hadn't seen them since. It's an old joke, not so, not so funny joke. Isn't that right, Roger? It's not so funny. But it's not so fun. Do what? Okay. Yeah, yeah, you did hear it this morning. You know, you're a good sport, Roger. You didn't say preacher. I already know what's coming. It's not so funny for a couple of reasons because that really sort of came around describing some of who we are, doesn't it? Some of who we see in our church, people that, that forget, in the, if they're United Methodists, the commitment they've made to faithfully participate. And if you think about those things, prayers, presence, gifts, service, witness, 24 hours a day, that, that is who we need to be. Those are the legs of the table or the footstool on which we need to stand. Those things form for us faithful Christian people. <clears throat> That's what we said we would be. But um, sometimes in our lives it's not that way. We forget some of those commitments we've made, one of which is to be present. I want to ask you, those who are smarter than I, which is most everybody, don't say anything, Brent, um, can you be present and absent at the same time? Yeah, I've said this before. Roger, you've heard this one too. Um, if you think you can't be, if you think, if you have a question about whether or not you can be present and absent at the same time, just ask your wife how many times she's talked to you and told you something and you didn't hear. We can be present and absent at the same time. We took a vow to be present. I want to ask you and want to think about what that means as a, to be present. What does our presence mean? I did a lot of reading on that and preparing for this morning and, um, one of, the, one of the authors, one of the writers of an article that I read really focused on just what we're doing right now. Spent a lot of time encouraging the reader to be present on Sunday morning because and they're so right that our presence together is a gift of God. Our presence together, whether it's virtual or whether it's here, is an opportunity to, to support one another, and there's a strength, there's a strengthening and a, a, that we need in corporate worship. We need to be together with other people. And there's nothing wrong with a great potluck dinner either, is there? Or a fellowship time or those times when we can bond together. We need the presence of one another. I was reminded as I prepared for this morning, one of the very first places, I, it was the first place I served, had two churches, uh, went different directions, not very far from the parsonage, right up the hill was a church. And between us, and that parsonage, I'm sorry, between the parsonage and the church, the church wasn't over half a mile away, was a family, a husband and wife, for whom I became good friends and would gather there a lot. He had a unique idea. He was a member of that church up on the hill just past him uh, that I would go, and I'd go past his house every time I went there, but I never remember him darkening the door. He called himself a member, and he would say to me, well, preacher, uh, Jesus understands. Jesus and I have got our own thing going. There's a song like that, isn't there, somewhere along the way? And he said, God, Jesus understands, you know, what I'm doing. Uh, then I was young and stupid and just said, okay, now I'm older, still stupid, but um, have a little more. I would probably have said a little more courage. I would have probably said to him, now, no, I don't think Jesus understands. You probably just hope he does. Because there's something about being in, a, in, the, in the body of Christ there's something about being in the family of Christians. We need that presence, and so that author is right. We grow stronger when we worship together. We go, grow stronger in our fellowship and our being together and our bonding together. We grow stronger as Christian people. As a matter of fact, when I've shared 
about presence before or about being together. I've shared just that, that we need to be together. We don't need to be one of those bats that gets baptized and disappears. But then another person I read for this morning moved beyond presence on Sunday morning and just checking off our, our presence, you know, on, on, on a grid somewhere. And that our presence with God goes far beyond anything of just Sunday morning. That we're called to other opportunities to be present as the body of Christ or individually as disciples all throughout the week. All throughout our lives. It sort of goes back to our offering time now that God gives us opportunities to minister and opportunity to serve every one of us all week long. Some of them we recognize, some of them we choose not to recognize, and some of them we just sort of push away. But God gives us opportunities, and in those opportunities to serve, or to serve we, there is the part of living out our presence with God. And as I was thinking and, and, and working this week, uh, God put in front of me actually a six- or seven-year-old article that just popped up in all of my email things. Isn't it interesting how God will do that? That sort of solidified what I was understanding or coming to understand of presence is so much more than our showing up on Sunday morning. That's a part of who we are. But if we think we, filled, we fulfilled that part of faithfully participating by coming to a church service or coming to a small group or coming to a Sunday school class or making a potluck, we've really missed a portion of what God calls of us. And I believe we've missed a portion of what we've uh, said yes to, vow, made the vow for in that prayers, presence, gift, service, and witness. And this, I'm just going to read to you this morning, uh, this part of the article that I, I, I found, again, that's about six years old when it was written. But he said the same thing that I was sort of, that was churning in me, and he said it better than I could say it myself. Listen to this. The vow of presence, he's talking about, he's talking about when he stood before a pastor and before a congregation and, and affirmed that vow of prayers, presence, gift, service, and probably not witnessed at the time, but now. The vow of presence, he said, the vow of presence, I thought, was always the easiest one. You just have to show up. Just show up. That's no problem. Once a week, I can do that. Once a week, I can make an appearance. A potluck dinner every once in a while, good people doing good things together, worship, fun times together, fellowship together. The, the, vow, the vow of presence is a breeze, I thought. I don't have to worry about living up to that promise. Got it. It's in the bag. But then something happened between the time he took that vow and the years that went on beyond that as he matured. As he began to grow in his faith. As he began to see God in other places, in other ways, um, he began to totally define or add to his understanding of presence. And he wrote this. He said, after those years, I realized, listen to this, because we've promised our presence. I realized that my promise of supporting the church with my presence is more than just showing up. More than just showing up. While potluck dinners and fun activities fall into that category of presence, there are times when offering our presence is more challenging than that. More to it than just showing up. And we all need to listen to that. And then he gave some examples, and, and these hit home our faithfully fulfilling our presence with God. He said, when someone has lost a loved one and words are inadequate, we can give the gift of presence. Prayer's presence doesn't just mean to gather here. When a family has been shattered for whatever reason, we can give the gift of presence. When a disaster hits a community, whatever the disaster, even wherever the disaster we can give the gift of presence. We don't just say, whenever, wherever, 
we, are all, we can offer ourselves, we give the gift of presence. God has called us to give of ourselves as a part of our presence. One more time, when God places that need in front of you this week, there's that opportunity to be present. It could be the church family gathering to be in mission to gather somewhere. It could be a small group being in mission somewhere. It could be a couple of people that are serving somewhere in this community or beyond. It could be just you out. But there are opportunities for us to share the gift of presence, to realize that being present is more than just Sunday morning. Whenever it is, wherever it is, God places in our lives opportunities to, to live out our vows, one of which is to be present. present. Presence isn't just about showing up on Sunday morning or bringing a dish or two to a potluck dinner. Nothing wrong with those. Let's get them going. I miss our potlucks. But there's so much more. <clears throat> and I believe when we just focus on the times that we can gather in, in group, we're missing a part of what we vowed and a part of what we said we would do. So this morning, I encourage you to remember that a part of your vow was faithfully participating by your presence. And that's anywhere we are where God puts an opportunity in front of us. Our Christian faith is built on presence, faithfully participating wherever God offers us the opportunity. Think about it. Prayers, presence, wherever it is, gifts, service, and witness. Amen. We have a song to sing this morning, don't we, Matthew? Yes, we do. As we close out our time this morning, um, only trust him. You got it. If you have a bulletin at a bulletin or a hymnal at home, you've got it on the screen here. Let's stand and sing it together. Come, every soul by sin oppressed, there's mercy with. All right, Matthew, Matthew, Mike, and Matthew. <laughs> you say Matthew Cooper or Mike Cooper, you got one of them. I know that. It's wonderful to worship with you this morning. Thank you for sharing here or for being with us through our live streaming. We're so glad you're here. Let's go to God in prayer as we close. God, we thank you and we praise you for your love and your presence in our lives. We worship you, Lord. You are the God of power and might to go with us. With us. To live in your presence. Through the power of your Holy Spirit, guide us in the ways you want us to go. And then empower us to fulfill your call of us. It's in the name of Jesus we come and we pray. Amen. And God bless.